The list of the 25 most iconic wrestling cards of all time starts now. What's up wrestling fans, trading card collectors, welcome to another episode of Wrestling With Cards. We've made it, it's finally here, it's time to start unveiling the 25 most iconic wrestling cards of all time as voted on by you, the collectors, the wrestling card community. If you're unfamiliar with how this list came to be, make sure to check out the preview video I did for this series in the archives of this channel, where I explain how we got the list, who participated in the list, was it just my biases, or was it the actual community dictating this list? Again, check that out in the archives. You can pause this one if you want, or you can go back and watch that one later. Not to mention, we get a lot of older videos in the archives, so if you're ever jonesing for some more wrestling card content, and you're waiting on my next video, or waiting on the next Card Foundation podcast, or the next WTC TV episode, go in the archives of this channel and kind of dig around, see what you can find. But I know the suspense is killing a lot of you out there, so without further ado, let's jump into the first card, card number 25. Card number 25, 1997, Cardinal Trivia, WWF, Rocky Maivia. Who remembers this card being like the top tier, upper echelon of wrestling cards to own? With a caveat, it was during the pandemic boom. This seemed to be the card that everybody was going after. We saw record sales for this card. We saw people grading it everywhere in all different grading companies, high grades, low grades, it didn't matter. It was all selling. Everybody wanted this card. Not to mention, I think this card is one of those cards that really started spurring the debate of what's a true rookie card? What counts? What doesn't? Is it pack pulled? Is it magazine? Is it this gaming card? During the pandemic boom, everybody was kind of digging up everything they could find, trying to kind of make their place within the hobby of well, I discovered this one, and this is the first. This is the first thing with this person's name on it, and this is the first year. That whole debate, I really think this card is one of the, I'll call it iconic cards of spawning that discussion. What was once looked at as the best rock card to own has really come tumbling down both in popularity and pricing. That being said, I still think this is a cool card if you're a rock fan, and I think it belongs in anyone's collection that is a rock fan or somebody that is collecting these iconic cards that we're going over in this list. And clearly, people still love this card as it was voted onto this list. Card number 24, 2002 Fleer WWF WrestleMania Signature Moves, Stone Cold Steve Austin Auto, out on 500. This card seems to be the go-to Austin autograph card for a lot of people within the wrestling card hobby. In my opinion, the image is great with this. It really works well with the landscape layout of this card, which as we know, a lot of times, landscape cards don't work out the best with the image that's picked for them. That being said, I am not a fan personally of the autograph on this card. Just having Austin 316, not for me. But I get it, people love it. Clearly, it was voted onto this list by the community. For Austin, again, just my opinion, I prefer the transcendent autos or the chromy cards that were signed after the fact. Or even some of those 95 WCW main event cards that were signed, again, after the fact, out of signing, etc. But again, just my opinions. Another thing to note, this card numbered to 500. And really, this card is a little harder to find than you may think. Again, numbered to 500. Most modern collectors would be like, oh, numbered to 500. There's a bunch of them out there. I'm not paying more than 10 bucks for this card. But what they don't understand is that a lot of these earlier wrestling cards that were numbered, so say like from early 2000s backwards, if you have a number card in that era, it's a lot harder to find regardless of what it's numbered to. Again, go out and look for one of these Austin 316 autos at any given time. You might find one or two, but it's not like they're plentiful. Not 100% sure either, but I think this card may actually be the first pack pullable Austin card. I could be wrong. Again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If you have that information, if you can confirm it, or if you've got the corrected information, leave a comment below. Let us know. Card number 23, 2013 Upper Deck Employee Exclusive Hulk Hogan Precious Metal Gems, number to 125. What? This card should be number one. This is my channel. This is my favorite card. I'm trying to pump this thing to the moon so then I can turn around and sell it. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? While it is sad to see one of my favorite cards of all time this low on the list, they made the list. No, no, not that list. The iconic wrestling card list that we're talking about today. I really think the community started coming around this card since a lot of other people started showing theirs off and buying them. And just the general talk of precious metal gems in general. But let's talk about this card for a second. Maybe why the community's kind of come around on it. And no, it's definitely not because of the image. Because, I mean, look at that image. Not the greatest image of Hogan. And no, it's not because it's numbered to 125. As we just spoke about with the Austin number to 500. 125 seems like a lot, but again, try to go find very many of these at any given time. A little bit harder to find than you think. I really think it comes down again to being a precious metal gem and kind of the, I'll call it, 
longevity of popularity that the precious metal gems in all sports and Marvel even, just precious metal gems has become this household name of a parallel and insert type of thing that again people were jazzed about when we heard AEW was coming out. Still waiting on those upper deck. But in the meanwhile, they put this one out in 2013. And it's the first wrestling card precious metal gem ever produced. I feel like some wrestling card collectors who are into this card have seen what precious metal gems have done in other sports or Marvel. And have kind of seen that and realized, oh, well, I can get that in wrestling card here. Like that thought of taking what works in something else and applying it to how you do things in your segment of the hobby, it finally clicked for a lot of people. I personally love that pinkish, purple, shiny background we've got going on. Not to mention this being an employee exclusive, so only given out to Upper Deck employees at the time it was produced. I guarantee you there's not 125 of these floating around out there, so adds a little bit more of a chase and scarcity to this card. Add all of those things that I've talked about together into one card, iconic wrestler, iconic brand, rarity scarcity factor, winning combination to appear somewhere on this iconic wrestling card list. Card number 22, 1990 classic, WWF Ultimate Warrior card number 127. Another classic card, yes pun intended. Especially because if you've watched any of my content for any length of time, you know how much I love these classic cards. Similar to the Rock card that we talked about earlier on this episode, this Ultimate Warrior card is looked by many as the rookie card to own of the Ultimate Warrior. And other wrestling card collectors, not so much. This is a card that features a great shot of the Ultimate Warrior. I love these studio type shots, always have. It's a card that a lot of people own in their collection, and that brings up the point that just because there's a lot of these cards out there doesn't mean they're not important in the grand scheme of wrestling card history. It's not a bad thing if everybody's able to get that card. Sure, it may not make it rare, scarce, or super valuable, but at the end of the day, is that what's required to make it onto the iconic list? It's not the end-all be-all, and you will see more of that as we unveil the cards on this list as we work our way through the series. Great card, again, but in my opinion, not the best Ultimate Warrior card out there. Will we see more Ultimate Warrior cards down the road on this list? Time will tell. You have to keep watching. Card number 21, 1991, WCW Impel Sting Hologram. This card is a classic. Who doesn't love Surfer Sting? And this card being a hologram version of Surfer Sting, the ultimate 90s combination. And we still have the lore that's built around this card. Was it pack pullable? Was it a case hit? Was it a dealer incentive? A promo type card, maybe. We've heard all of these things mentioned, and we've heard people on all sides of the argument. And I'm honestly not sure we'll ever find the 100% accurate answer to this question. That being said, I feel like if you were a fan of late 80s to early 90s wrestling, you've got to have this card in your collection. No matter if it's raw, no matter what grade it's in or what slab it's in, it's kind of a must-have, I think, for wrestling card collectors. And there you have it, cards number 25 through 21 of the most iconic wrestling cards of all time, as voted on by you, the collectors, the community, the viewers of this channel. What did you think about this list so far? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have an opinion or a story behind one of the cards we've talked about today? Maybe a memory of one of these cards specifically was brought back to you. I'd love to hear your feedback, your comments, your stories. Leave a comment below and let us know what you think about this list so far. Do you agree or disagree? Again, talk about the nostalgia that these cards bring back to you or talk about a big flip maybe that one of these cards got you some other PC. It doesn't matter. Let's get a discussion going around the cards mentioned in today's video. Again, leave a comment below. If today's video brought you some value, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and share this video with a friend, a collector, a wrestling fan. Let's spread it all over the world to get more people involved with this list and watching. And until next time where we discuss cards number 20 through 16, click the videos on the screen for more great wrestling card content in the archives of this channel. See you next time.